The story of the colonial era has usually been told from white European male perspective while giving slight attention to the lives of their female counterparts. Women's life in the new world has often been difficult, exhausting and underappreciated. They had to take care of all the domestic work while assisting their husband's business. However, even with their significant contribution, they were still deprived of various legal rights and often subject to domestic abuse. Filing for divorce as a woman was extremely difficult compared to men. Even when a divorce was granted, newspapers always tried to put the blame on the women with headlines, even if the grounds were completely justified. In other words, the life of a married woman in the colonial Americas was no better roses. Welcome back to Binge History, where we will be taking a look at the life in colonial America from the perspective of a housewife. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more content just like this one, and turn on post notifications. With all that done, let's binge history like we binge eat. Colonial America refers to the 13 British colonies that were established during the 17th and early 18th centuries in what is now a part of the eastern United States. Most of the immigrants were either merchants who settled in the Americas looking to capitalize on tobacco crops, or they were part of minority Christian sects who fled England fearing persecution, forming small close-knit colonies. Such notable examples are the Puritan colonies of Massachusetts. Others include the Dutch who settled down in what is present-day New York. Fun fact, New York back in the day was called New Amsterdam. Another example of religious minorities of Europe forming colonies in America are the British Quakers, who wear an offshoot of the Protestants, and German Palatines, who wear a German version of the Protestants, living in Pennsylvania. And one more example would be of the Presbyterians, who fled Scotland to settle in what became to be known as the American Wild West. The colonists were extremely prolific, abundant economic opportunities such as readily available land encouraged early marriages and large families. Single men and unmarried women could not live very comfortably and were relatively few. Widows and widowers needed partners to maintain homes and raise children, and so remarried quickly. As a result, most adults were married with numerous children and families containing 10 or more members were common. Their daily lives were in stark contrast to the lives of the wedded women of today. While many enjoy their lives balanced with a career, body autonomy, rights to vote, inheritance and seeking a divorce should things not work out, most of these things were non-existent for colonial era wives. In colonial America, the experiences of women and children varied widely among ethnic and social groups, and from colony to colony. People of Plymouth, an English colonial venture in today's southeastern portion of Massachusetts, adhered to a rigid and fundamentalist Christian denomination of the Puritans. They stressed upon their men and women to adhere and obey to a very rigid interpretation of the Bible, and these interpretations governed their lives and roles. The main duty of a woman after marriage was to be a dutiful wife to her husband, bear him pious, produce offspring, and nurture them in the light of these puritanical interpretations. In the early colonial time, women were taught to read so that they could learn the Bible, but few were taught to write, since it was believed women did not have to know how to write. Ministers often told their congregations that women were inferior to men and more inclined to sin and err. Because a typical woman was expected to run a household and attend to domestic duties, they would become more mature and responsible from very early ages, compared to today's extended childhood and adolescence. Girls would learn housework like cooking, sewing, gardening, and animal husbandry, since the women would give birth to around seven to eight children throughout their lives as concepts of planned parenting was non-existent, Girls would learn to take care of children at a very young age and would assume a sort of motherly role in the house. Sometimes women would also fill in the shoes of their husbands, assisting them in their businesses such as taverns, managing plantations and working in the fields. This however varied from colony to colony. It is said that the Dutch colonial women were on comparatively more equal footing than the women of new English colonies, while the women of the southern colonies had it the toughest. Among women in German communities in Pennsylvania, they had to work in fields and stables. 
However, for Puritan settlers in New England, women were not required to work in the fields with their husbands. As a German and Dutch immigrant wife, you might be luckier than your English counterpart, since you were granted more control over property, and such right was not permitted in the local English law. Therefore, unlike English colonial wives, German and Dutch wives owned their own items such as clothes and were able to write wills managing the property brought into a marriage. According to statistics from Plymouth County Records, domestic abuse was fairly common and 80% of offenders in cases of spousal abuse were husbands. In addition, these are just the documented cases. Many of the cases went undocumented as it was primarily a male-dominated society, and the rigid interpretations allowed husbands to discipline their wives. One could attribute such prevalence to the Anglo-American common law that originally provided a husband as master of his household with a right to punish his wife in the form of corporal punishment or chastisement, as long as he did not inflict permanent injury upon her. Since getting a divorce in the early times was difficult as a woman, the only way to escape a bad marriage was to suffer a near-death experience and to have the bravery to come forward and get help. In most cases, unfortunately, abused women kept quiet about their circumstances. Although the right of chastisement was revoked during the 19th century, men who assaulted their wives were often granted formal and informal immunities from prosecution in order to protect the privacy of the family and to promote domestic harmony. Though modern academia might argue that the laws were borderline misogynistic concerning the abuse of women, some examples of very pro-women ruling by the court exist that can contend the general perception. Take for example the case of John Dunham, who was sentenced to be severely whipped because of his abuse and murderous threat to his wife. But his wife intervened, and that punishment was revoked. However, the court still required a security for good behavior of 20 pounds, which would be returned to him at the next court as long as he stopped beating his wife. Viewers, it is obvious that abusive, toxic relationships cannot last forever. Compromise has its limits, but what were the divorce laws like, and when did they come into existence? Well, surprisingly, despite the archaic approach of the Puritans, divorce laws were made just nine years after the Pilgrim Fathers landed on the shores of Massachusetts. However, the first divorce didn't actually happen until 1638, and the reason was James Luxford's bigamy. Although laws existed from the get-go, people and even courts saw divorce as a breach of sacred oaths taken in the presence of God. Therefore, much stress was placed on reconciliation until the divorce states came into being. Leaving the colonial era, people could get divorced in three days, but the catch was that they had to travel to Mexico to get one. On the other hand, the state of Dakota allowed divorce in 1871, but the conditions were a lot strict. People would have to be residents of Dakota for three months. Reno, Nevada was probably the most liberal of the colonies and the quickest to grant divorces. So much so that they termed it the divorce racket. We hope you liked this video, and if you did, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Make sure to turn on the post notifications and also let us know in the comment section about your views on colonial America. Thank you for watching Binge History. Until the next time we meet, continue learning and stay healthy.